This is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. And we just looked at the millennium. And after the millennium, the Lord is going to burn everything up. He's going to make a new heavens and a new earth. Satan and his army was just devoured by fire. And now the Lord's going to burn everything up. You know, anything bad that might have been left over, it's gone now. You see, the millennium was not perfect. It was not a perfect kingdom. There was still sin. You know, it was the closest that we've got to a perfect kingdom, but there was still sin going on and things like that. There were still people dying. But now we're coming into that perfect kingdom. But first the Lord burns everything up. In 2 Peter 2, or 2 Peter 3, 10 through 13, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? looking for and hasting into the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. So God's going to burn everything up, and then God is going to judge the lost of all ages at the great white throne, along with saints from the tribulation and the millennium, because there's a book of life there, and if there wasn't a book of life, if, there, if the book of life is there, then that shows that there's somebody there that's in the book of life. So there's going to be some saints judged there as well. Not us, because we got judged at the judgment seat of Christ. But after the great white throne, then comes eternity. But before we look at eternity... Let's look at a possibility of a period of time between the renovation of the earth by fire, the great white throne judgment, and eternity. Between the great white throne judgment and eternity. And I'm not 100% sure of it, but I hate to exclude it. So it's pretty much like I'm just telling you about it. You can take it or leave it. It really makes no difference. But after the millennial kingdom, the renovation of the earth by fire, and the great white throne judgment you have a period of time right before eternity begins, before eternity begins, because it still involves time. And it's a thousand generations. In Deuteronomy 7, 9, it says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Now, the Lord hasn't kept his covenant with Israel for a thousand generations yet. So it would have to be yet future. In 1 Chronicles 16, 15, it says, Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Psalm 105, 8, He, that, he hath remembered his covenant forever, the Lord which he commanded to a thousand generations. If a generation is 33 years, this could be an additional 33,000 years before eternity actually begins. And this is not a new teaching. I didn't just come up with it. You know, guys like Larkin taught it. A lot of the old school guys taught it. He called it the perfect age or the perfect kingdom. And this could be that dispensation of the fullness of times in Ephesians 1.10. And I'm not sure that this period of time will be any different than eternity itself i mean it's going to be a perfect kingdom on the new it's going to be a new heavens and a new earth no sin no death i'm not sure anything other about anything else about it other than what i just told you we just know it's a perfect kingdom without sin and there's going to be a new heavens and new earth so let's look at what eternity will be like as good as we can tell in Revelation 21 and verse 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Notice that God gives you a pattern in the Bible for everything. 
You can look back at the book of Genesis and it will shed some light on eternity for you. In Genesis 1.1, you had in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And now you have a new heaven and a new earth in eternity. And John says in verse 2, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The average Christian thinks that when they die, they will just be up in the third heaven for all eternity. But in the future, heaven comes down. You're going to be in New Jerusalem. The born-again believer from the church age will get in New Jerusalem. And I don't believe that we'll just be limited to that. But Paul shows us that New Jerusalem is the mother of every born-again believer. For those who don't believe that we get New Jerusalem, Galatians 4.26, But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. This city descending from the third heaven is called the mother of of us all and this is where the sci-fi movies probably got the idea for motherships not that they go to the bible to get their ideas but somebody's read the bible that gives them their ideas you will still have three groups of people in eternity with three different homelands although they won't be limited to their homeland but those three groups of people first corinthians ten thirty two, give none offense neither to the jews nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. The Jews will get the new earth. The Gentiles will get the new heavens. And the church will get new Jerusalem. Remember the pattern from Genesis. If Adam and Eve never ate off the tree of knowledge of good and evil, then they would have ate from the tree of life and lived forever. In Genesis 3.22 and the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So if they took from the tree of life and ate, they would have lived forever. But they would have lived forever in their sinful state. Because this was after the fall that he said this. So he had to put a cherubim there to guard it. But there would have been so many sinless people who never died if Adam and Eve would have took of the tree of life and never have fell and it would have filled the earth and went on out into God's other creation which is there for a purpose this is what will happen in eternity with the Gentiles who will populate his kingdom in their natural bodies eating off the tree of life living forever Revelation twenty two fourteen: blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in the gates of in through the gates into the city. So you see, there's no need to get rid of the verses about someone getting life off of a tree. But in Isaiah 9, 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Remember, God told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. In Genesis 1, 28, before the fall. So there is the pattern. That is what God wants. The increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Sinless beings to grow his kingdom that will get bigger and bigger and bigger. That's what God wants. The Gentiles will populate the new heaven. The Jews will be on the earth. And the church's homeland is New Jerusalem. And I believe our job in eternity is going to be a lot more than playing on a harp on a cloud. And our glorified bodies will be able to travel faster than the speed of light. We're going to have the mind of Jesus Christ. With that, we will be able to teach every one of his ways. 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 Corinthians 13, 12, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. We're going to know what Jesus Christ knows about the scriptures. And he's going to use us to be able to teach people the words of God. That's what I believe. To teach people, lead the people that's born during that time. Because you're going to have all these people around in natural bodies, having children. And they're going to need to be taught. And these are the ones who eat off of a tree to get eternal life. Men, you don't eat off of a tree to get eternal life. We already have eternal life and we will have glorified bodies. However, there are going to be some people in eternity 
who still have flesh and blood bodies. You see, they will have to eat off the tree of life to get eternal life, just like Adam and Eve would have done. Do you see the pattern? That which hath been is that which shall be. Revelation 22, 1 and 2. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb in the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. People's going to be eating off these trees. Revelation 21, 3. If you look at Revelation 21, 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. We will be in the very presence of God. The heavenly tabernacle will be with men, and God will be in fellowship with man, just like he was with Adam and Eve. You see the pattern. Revelation 21, 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. You see, in the millennium, you had tears, you had death, sorrow, crying, and pain. That goes away. The former things pass away. After the great white throne judgment, no more tears, no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. Verse 5, And he that sat upon the throne said, Notice, he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. In the God's game of thrones, who do you see on the throne? The king of kings, God himself. And he's going to make all things new. He's the true king of kings. You see all these people fighting about who was going to be the greatest, who was going to be king. Who do you see on the throne at the end? It says, And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. We got a king, you're going to have a king on the throne that's true and faithful. And we may be reigning as kings as well, but he is king of kings. You are finally going to get your mansion that Jesus told you about in John 14, 2 through 3. Where he said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, Revelation 21, 6, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Now, look at verse 9 and 10. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So you see, Jesus Christ has a bride. It says, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. His bride that's us. And it is a city, New Jerusalem. You say, that doesn't make sense. Okay. Well, think about it. Satan has a bride, and it's also a city. Mystery Babylon the Great, Revelation 17 and 18. And this is the city we're looking for. The New Jerusalem. Or Hebrews eleven sixteen. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. And this city is going to be a lot better than the trash piles that we have in this country. Now, Revelation 21, 11 through 18 describes this city. If you want to know about eternity, read Revelation 21 and the first part of Revelation 22. But look at Revelation 21, 18. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. Going to be unlike anything that we've ever seen. And then Revelation 21, 21. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass. 
and I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. So no temple needed in New Jerusalem. In Revelation 21, 23, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of, the God, glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. There will still be a sun and moon, but it won't be needed for light because we will have the light of life. Revelation 21, 24 and 25, And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. You know, you're not going to have to worry about going to bed anymore. Some people hate bedtime, especially your kids. They're going to love this. There's going to be no night there, no bedtime. Revelation 21, 26 and 27 and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So do you ever stop and think about how great this is going to be? No more murder, no more corrupt people running things, no more blood, sweat, and tears, no more death, no more sin, no more fighting the flesh, no more bills, no more worry. Revelation 22, 3 through 5. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. So that's eternity. And this is the end of the first season of God's Game of Thrones.